One of the most fascinating things about Danmachi is the way that leveling and abilities work. While I did make a video covering that about a year ago, I didn't get the chance to talk about how exactly Bell as an adventurer has been progressing, and that's one of the more interesting things that didn't make it into the anime. Usually we're only ever told when he goes up a level, but it's actually after every battle that his base stats are improved. Combine this with his unique Realis Freeze ability and you have the perfect combination of things that work towards building the ultimate adventurer. Although some of this may be similar to what I talked about a year ago, it'll serve as a good recap for details you need to know for future lore videos, particularly the ones where I talk about every member in each familia. So let's start off this series of lore videos by taking a look at exactly how strong Bell has become. But first, this video is sponsored by King's Raid. If the name sounds familiar, that's because I've talked about it before as one of the new fantasy anime coming out this season. It's an isekai adaptation of the same story from the free-to-play mobile game. Much like Danmachi, the core of this series showcases the classic struggle between demons and man, all while our hero protagonist sets out on a journey to obtain the power to finally defeat them. As for the game, it has a much more in-depth storyline of 10 captivating chapters, each bringing in new playable characters that aren't locked behind a gacha system. Instead, the current roster of over 90 heroes is 100% recruitable and customizable, including the most recent edition of the main hero class from Chapter 10. Right now you can get his Darkened Rebel version for free just by playing in the hero dungeon. Aside from that though, there's also boss raids, guild creation, and even a global PvP arena. Plenty of different features and modes to keep you occupied while you're playing. So feel free to use the link in the description to download King's Raid for free today. Or if you want to watch the anime instead, then you can check out the first few episodes over at Funimation. Now, let's get back to the video. Before we can talk about Bell's progression, we first need to review the basics of leveling. In the adventurer city of Arario, the ability to level up, gain experience, and subsequently grow stronger all stem from what's called a Thalna. Every adventurer who joins a familia receives this, and what it is is a blessing that allows them to receive portions of their god's divine power essentially imbuing them with small amounts of Arcanum. Once an adventurer receives a Thalna, they basically become level 1 and can start gaining Excelia. This is the formal term for what's fundamentally Orario's experience system. Pretty much anything an adventurer does will result in the gain of Excelia, and that will in turn upgrade one of five fundamental areas otherwise known as basic abilities, each of which are broken down into 10 individual ranks. S being the strongest and I being the weakest. Alongside these letters, there's also a numerical score from 0 to 999. A score of 0 to 99 will place whatever basic ability at the lowest rank of I. Then every 100 after that ranks it one letter higher until reaching the max value of S999. But very few adventurers ever get there. That's because they don't need to max their stats in order to level usually having them anywhere between 500 and 800 is a good place to be. Once they get there, all they have to do next is something spectacular. This refers to an accomplishment so amazing for their current level that not only will it overload their fauna with Excelia, but it'll also impress the gods as well. That, in combination with decent stats, is what's needed to reach the next level. If this doesn't make sense to you right now, it should once I start showing how it's been happening for Bell. In any case, once an adventurer levels up, they'll gain a significant boost to all their stats. There's no fixed number that can quantify exactly how much they've improved, but usually it's enough to make them stronger than any person who's a lower level than they are. So regardless of how high a level 1 stats may be, a level 2 will always be stronger than them. At least that's how it's supposed to be anyway. Now, the other key thing about leveling up is that it also resets all stats back to rank I0. That doesn't mean the level 1 stats are gone though. They're actually kept as a hidden baseline in addition to whatever boost was received from leveling up. So, when measuring an adventurer's overall power, you need to sum the previous level's stats with their current level in order to get an accurate value. It's a system that can get a little bit complicated if you've never encountered it before. So, let's use Bell's leveling path as an example to better understand how it actually works bringing us to the main topic of how strong Bell has become since the series began. Before meeting Eyes, Bell had no skills, no magic, and the lowest ranked stats in pretty much everything. It was only after being saved by her that everything changed. His next update showed a slight increase in both strength and dexterity, 
but his agility is what went up the most, likely because of all the running away he'd been doing. As you'll soon see, the stat that gets buffed the most is always dependent on the action Bell has taken. So if Bell is always running away, then his agility will be the stat that shows the most significant improvement. If it's something else like taking damage, then his defense will be the stat that shows the improvement instead. That's just how it works. In any case, this encounter with Eyes also triggered the manifestation of Bell's first skill, Realis Freeze. This is the very thing that allows him to improve so quickly. So long as he maintains a desire to become as strong as Eyes, Bell will continue to possess an accelerated rate of growth directly proportional to those feelings. So what this means is that the more that Bell wants to reach Eyes' level, the faster he will grow. At the time of being saved by her, that yearning was only at its beginning. But the effects were already evident after his second update. You see, the first time Bell returned to the dungeon after meeting Ice, almost all his stats went up an entire rank. Then it was after being humiliated at the bar that his desire to reach Ice grew even more. That's why the night he spent fighting monsters in the dungeon increased all his stats an entire rank yet again, more than doubling the total numerical value of his stats from what it was the day before. Bell's next update came after he had beaten the Silverback. Had his stats been slightly higher, then this could have very well been the feat needed to push him to level 2. But because his stats were so low going into the fight, it wasn't quite enough to get him there. Instead, his strength, dexterity, and agility all went up two ranks, once again doubling the total sum of his overall ability. For context, this is something that would normally take any regular adventurer several months to do. But for Bell, it only took a matter of days. That's just how much faster his rate of growth is. It was a few days after the Silverback incident that Bell would meet Lily and do some more runs in the early floors of the dungeon. One thing to note about his current stats is that this is the range where most adventurers start to consider leveling. They usually get to the D or B rank in everything, then immediately try to complete the level up process with some sort of spectacular feat. This is because a lot of adventurers don't want to waste their time gaining Excelia that counts for less. You see, the grind to bring their stats to the rank of A or S is a long and strenuous one. It requires exponentially more Excelia for every subsequent letter. Not to mention that in order to keep gaining Excelia, you also need to be fighting progressively stronger opponents as well. So most adventurers would rather level up as soon as possible and get that quick boost in stats, than risk fighting stronger enemies at a lower level for a marginal return. To them, boosting lower level stats isn't worth putting off boosting higher level stats. Even though in the long run it would be more beneficial to their overall power, the time commitment it takes to do that is simply just too much. I mean, it could take months or even years to get from A to S. So why bother waiting when you can just get an immediate power boost while still being at the D rank? That's the mindset that pretty much every adventurer has. Although for Bell it may seem like he likes to wait, he doesn't necessarily see the benefits of waiting to level up either. His stats kind of automatically max out as a byproduct of his Realis Freeze ability. It's something that will become very evident once you see his stats from after beating the Minotaur. But before that, Bell had gone back to the dungeon numerous times with Lily. He also obtained the Swift Strike Magic Firebolt. Up until now, Bell's magic stat had remained at I-0 simply because he couldn't use any magic. It was only after gaining Firebolt and training directly with Eyes that Bell's update showed the most significant improvement that we've seen so far. In just a single month, Bell had raised all his stats except for magic from the rank of I to S. His agility even went beyond the max rank of S to double S, a phenomenon that could only be explained through his unique skill. I mean, up until now, no one even considered it a possibility to go above the S rank. So Hestia could only assume that Bell's accelerated rate of growth was what allowed him to completely bypass that supposed limit of S999. It's a concept that if made known to the public would shake the very foundations of Orario, which is why Hestia chooses to keep it a secret, even from Bell himself. What this means though is that Bell's overloaded double S and triple S stats could sometimes reach a total sum that is greater than that of adventurers who are a higher level than him, giving him power similar to that of a level above. This was definitely the leading factor in what allowed him to beat the Minotaur. Because Bell's stats were all S or above, this made him capable of facing off against an enemy that no level 1 should have any right beating. That's why everyone was so shocked to see Bell pull it off he surpassed the limitations that came with being a level 1. 
It was after this feat that all his stats became double S or triple S. And because beating the Minotaur served as his spectacular accomplishment, Bell also became the fastest adventurer on record to reach level 2, slaying a grand total of 3,001 monsters along the way. It was on his next update that all his stats reset back to I-0, but his total overall power for level 1 still remained at 5,546. That's the hidden baseline that gets added to all his level 2 stats now. The only thing that's different is that his level 2 stats are now tracked separately. Alongside this level up, Bell also gained the second skill, Argonaut. This was a skill that manifested out of his desire to become a hero. But in order to use it to its full potential, he first needs to spend 3 minutes to charge it. Only then can he release this skill as the massive burst of energy it's intended to be. So basically the longer he charges it, the more damage it does and it can be used to strengthen any one of his abilities, skills, or attacks. Bell's next update came when he was trying to prove to Aina that he was capable of traversing the middle floors of the dungeon. You see, Aina didn't believe that Bell was ready to go there yet. I mean, it had only been 11 days since he had fought the Minotaur. At most, his stats could only be marginally higher than rank I-0. At least, that's what Aina was thinking. But when Bell showed her his stats, almost every single one of them had gone up 2-3 to three ranks. It was progression far faster than any adventurer Aina had ever seen before. He had also developed the new ability known as Luck, an attribute similar to divine protection that improves his overall performance in the dungeon, basically making it so that monsters drop items more frequently. In any case, this was the last update prior to Bell's death march down to the 18th floor. It was only after Hestia arrived with everyone else that we see his perilous descent improved all stats by about 100. Keep in mind that this was only three days after seeing Aina, and two days after that was when he faced the Goliath, a feat that practically doubled his total power yet again, increasing all his stats by almost 300 each. Now, it's after Season 1 that the rate with which we get updates of Bell's progress slows down a bit, but the next one does give us a good example of how exactly Excelia works, and it comes from the update that happened after his fight with Hyacinthus. For reference, this was only two days after he had fought the Goliath, so all his stats were still the same number from when he beat it. That said, one punch from Hyacinthus gave Bell enough Excelia to boost his defense 4 points higher. So that's what I mean when I say that everything and anything can be done to gain Excelia. No matter how small the action, so long as it relates to one of the 5 basic abilities it'll work towards improving it. Such is the nature of Excelia. Now, as we know, Bell spent quite a bit of time training with Eyes in order to get ready for the war game. Had he not, then his current level 2 stats wouldn't have been enough to beat a level 3. But since training with Eyes once again boosted all his stats to the double S and triple S ranks, that left him more than capable of beating Hyacinthus on his own. It pretty much meant that the sum of all his stats were now higher than the sum of Hyacinthus's, which honestly is to be expected if you assume Hyacinthus leveled when most of his stats were at the D to B rank. That would make his average total sum per level be around 3,000. If you multiply that by 2, then add the sum of his current level 3 stats, you'll still get a number that's lower than Bell's current total of almost 11,000. So that's where those hidden parameters from the previous levels come into play. Of course, this is a very simplistic way of looking at it. There are other factors that need to be considered as well. The base stats are just the most important ones. Anyway. Beating Hyacinthus served as the spectacular feat Bell needed to reach level 3, thus resetting all his stats back to I-0 one more time. But as it was with level 1, his level 2 baseline remains at a solid 5,396. Combine that with his level 1 of 5,546 and you'll get that total power sum of almost 11,000. Now, it was 9 days after leveling up that the whole Ishtar Familia incident happened. By then, most of his stats had only gone up around 1-2 to two ranks, but it was the event of having another goddess see his Falna that gave us more information on Bell's overall power. Initially, Ishtar was mostly surprised by the presence of his luck ability. I mean, this was one of the more rare ones to come across, but that wouldn't explain why he was immune to her charm. As far as she knew, Every existence in the world, regardless of whether they're human, monster, or god, shouldn't have the power to escape the charm of a goddess of beauty. That's when Ishtar saw his other skill, an undocumented attribute that affected his rate of growth. If the description for this skill was to be believed, then that would mean Bell possessed a will so strong that it made him capable of manifesting his own skills into existence, 
It was a sense of determination strong enough to forcibly accelerate his growth simply out of sheer desire. A pure one-track mind that only came around once a millennium. One of the side effects that came with it just so happened to be an immunity to the charm of a goddess, rendering both Ishtar and Freya's abilities useless against him. That's just how pure Bell's will was. In any case, Bell didn't really do much training or monster hunting during the invasion arc. His stats only got updated once during the entire two weeks that it was happening, and that was part of a group update session with everyone else in the Familia. Although his improvement was fairly negligible, the important thing to note here was what Hestia did. You see, everyone wanted to know why Bell's rate of growth was much faster than their own. I mean, they were all fighting the same monsters together. So, it didn't make sense that Bell was improving anywhere between 50 to 100 points when everyone else was only going up by 10. That's when Hestia decided it was best to finally tell everyone else about his special skill. So, going into Season 3, everyone except for Bell now knows why he's able to level up so quickly. As for where Bell's at now, well, as of meeting the Xenos in the dungeon, his stats are this. Pretty much midway through level 3 in almost everything. He also developed the new ability called Immunity. Although it doesn't quite make him immune to everything, it does act as a strong resistance against things like poisons. But anyway, that was exactly how Bell has progressed throughout the entire story. In the four months since he'd been saved by eyes, he's gone up over two and a half levels, which is the fastest rate of growth for any adventurer in Erario. What makes him even stronger is the fact that his Hestia knife scales in power just like he does. The more he grows, the stronger this knife will become. That's the key trait of this living weapon. So, it almost seems like everything is working in Bell's favor to make him become the ultimate adventurer. I mean, everything from his skills to his gear help pave the path he needs to follow in order to become the hero he wants to be. But remember, that growth only exists so long as his desire to reach eyes does as well. If that feeling was to ever dwindle, then so too would Bell's rate of growth. It makes you wonder what would happen if Bell and eyes were to ever end up on opposing sides. Though, if Bell was to continue overloading his stats to double S and triple S, then a level 5 Bell could very well be capable of taking on a level 6 Eyes. This is because Eyes didn't max out her stats like Bell did. Her strength and endurance are actually subpar in comparison to her agility and dexterity. So, it's not too absurd to think that Bell could actually catch up to Eyes. He just needs to continue growing at the rate that he currently is right now. If he does, then Bell will always become the strongest adventurer for the level he's at. I mean, even Otter isn't capable of going beyond S999. So, just by the numbers alone, Bell has the potential to become the strongest adventurer in all of Rario. And that's the answer to the question of how strong he is. Of course, that's assuming conditions remain the same. But if you're watching Season 3, I'm sure you've noticed that things look like they're about to change. So, we'll see soon enough if this becomes something that ends up affecting Bell. Anyway, hopefully this served as a good recap for how the leveling system works. It's stuff that you'll need to know for when I do the next lore video. In the meantime though, feel free to check out the cut content series to see what the anime has been leaving out from the novels. Now, before I go, I'd like to thank King's Raid once again for sponsoring this video. You can experience the isekai anime version of the game over at Funimation, or play the intense 10 chapter story for yourself by using the link in the description. And don't forget that the most recent update has made Rebel Klaus available for free in the Hero Dungeon. But anyway, as always thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime content then you already know what to do. So, until next time, ciao!